Well, hello everyone. Another day, another video, but this isn't just any old digital planet because we're out and about today. It's uh, me, Gareth, and producer, Michelle. Hello. Hola. And uh, we're at uh, Bletchley Park at the National Museum of Computing. And uh, we're here to do a programme all about the history of home computing. And uh, we've literally just arrived. I think we have a couple of hours to do the whole show, so uh, no pressure. <laughs> I don't know if we can ask uh, Michelle this, this time in the morning when you've only had half a coffee so far, but what, what's your kind of big plan for the programme? The plan for the programme <laughs> is to make Gareth work really hard. Um, well, that happens every to week. Make sure he has 10 takes for everything. Um, and to get Bill playing with small computers. Hey, this is where our visit to Bletchley Park begins. That uh, popping up bit from in front of the camera wasn't my idea, it's Bill's idea actually. Ladies and gentlemen, Bill's on the screen. Cinematic. <laughs> I thought it was supposed to be a piece of television genius there, I think you're fine there, Bill. <laughs> Thank uh, you. It's a shame we can't do that on the radio. It is well, so look, this is brilliant though, because you can get almost your entire music collection on one of these. That's a 200 megabyte disk drive. Now I can barely, barely pick that up. Here's a 2 gig memory. memory card. That's a 2 gig, right? That's. <laughs> I, that's about a thousand times more capacity in Bill's car than I've got in this, and I can't hold this for Richard. Uh, Tony, just give us your reaction to what you've seen and are seeing here at Bletchley Park. Well, I've been, we've, we've been having a look at the PC gallery, and I was transported back in time by the sounds of the machines. When Bill started coding on the BBC Micro, I was transported back to school, and sounds of people tapping away on the keyboard. I did, didn't think that sound would play such an important part, but I was, I was taken back more years than I care to remember. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's been brilliant. I mean, I've been here a few times before um, when things were kicking off. I, I remember this room, it must have been about 14 years ago. Um, brought my daughter here when she was very little. And it was, it was when Bletchley Park, which is obviously a very important historic site because it's so important in the history of code breaking and computing and, and all the British war effort and all those things, was, was really under threat. Uh, and, and we came along and, and tried to offer support. And what, what's really great is that, you know, now, 14 years later, it's not quite thriving, but doing very well, and there's, there's a good chance it will be saved for the nation and the rest of the world. Indeed, I mean, this building, this building is the, is the world's first purpose-designed computer centre that was built to hold house the Colossus computers, and now this building is saved, and it's home to the National Museum of Computing, and we're saved for the next 50 years at least. And, and pretty much every corner you turn here, it, you know, it has, well certainly for me, memories of computers that I've either owned or I've used them at work or back at university days, hard drives like this that I remember, I think they were just on their way out, but you know, they were still around when I sort of started in engineering in the, in the late 80s, so uh, it's kind of memory lane and uh, we're going to check out a bit more. So this is the Colossus machine, uh, an incredible piece of work. What would happen is that they would intercept, oh Bill's taking the camera, cheers Bill, um, they would intercept um, messages from high command, literally from the top, from Hitler to his most senior generals. Um, those would be kind of radio communications, they'd be intercepted, they were all encrypted or ciphered and um, the, the numbers that uh, represented the cipher would be transferred to this uh, paper tape that's whirring through this very elaborate mechanism of, of gears and wheels and then that would be fed into the belly of the beast as it were into this huge computer here that's made up of these old thermionic valves by the way this computer's been rebuilt so it's not a replica you know bits of this are the original kit but a lot of it is, is from some kit that's been acquired uh, since the war and uh, anyway so go into the belly of the beast here through a whole load of uh, relays and if these remind you of the old telephone exchanges, well that's because it's pretty much the same technology. And um, the inputs and outputs of the machine are represented by these lights. And I'm oversimplifying vastly here, but uh, these here are inputs, these are outputs. And then the all-important keys that you would then use to unlock the information would be printed out on this typewriter here. So when it's in action, it's as if the invisible man is kind of pressing all these QWERTY keys and you can see a series of numbers that have come through. So these would then be passed on to the next stage of the operation and uh, translated literally back into text. So it'll be things like, uh, you know, tanks have been observed at such and such a position. Very important strategic information. So that is Colossus, an amazing machine. Cheers, Bill. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I've been recording brilliant sounds. <laughs> very excited. This, I mean, it's a great place for radio because there are just so many sounds here as well. well this is the Tunny machine. That is the Tunny machine, which we're still finishing building, unfortunately. We can't actually show that working. 
Yeah. Uh, but that's the tiny machine there. This, by the way, is Tony Sale, who rebuilt Colossus, the machine we've just been looking at. And uh, we've already seen how Colossus gives you a, a stream of numbers that can be used to unlock strategically important military information from the Germans. So, uh, Tony, just remind me, what does this machine do? This is the well, Tunny machine. This is the Tunny machine. When, when Colossus has found the wheel settings on a particular radio intercept, you plug those settings up on the Tunny machine here. Here's the wheel, 12 wheels there plug those up, read in the ciphertext, and then if you've got it right, out comes the German decrypt on that teleprinter there. And those were the golden nuggets coming out there, literally occasionally messages from Hitler to his generals coming out on that teleprinter alongside the tiny machine. So this, this is probably one of my favourite parts of the whole place, because you get to play on all these computers. And so anybody who's been around for a while, you'll probably remember these. Uh, a Macintosh, BBC Micro, yay, we had one of those at school, and then one of these. Look at that, ZX Spectrum complete with cassette deck to load those programs in so you can do a bit of uh, funky kind of 1980s style programming. Um, then uh, an old Apple machine there, and some of the precursors to machines that these days we think of as uh, PCs in a, in a modern sense.